So, you finished your new song. You've got a melody. You've written out the verses, that, oh, some great lyrics. The chorus, you think it's got that killer hook. And the bridges, oh, when that bridge hits, oh, oh boy, this is it. Okay, this is the one. This is the next hit. Church is going to love this one. It's the real deal. Does that sound familiar to you? Do your, do your thought processes ever head in that direction? I think we can all sometimes be liable to delusions of grandeur when it comes to our songwriting. Or perhaps you're more likely to go the other way. Maybe you're likely to put a song together and you sit there and look at it and you're like, oh, it's, not, it's not got anything going for it for this. This, oh, this isn't the point. This isn't great. I'm just going to drop it and forget about it. I've been there too. I identify with both of those reactions. Okay, The over-enthusiastic and the warrior. I think we can both fall into, we can fall into both of those traps. And what I want to do in this video is suggest some ways, some helpful habits of thought and some criteria concerning how we should review our songs ourselves. Because obviously part of our process is sharing it with other people. But it's also really helpful for us to develop skills and practices that enable us to be self-critical first. And I mean that in the fuller sense of the word, okay? Critical as in considering and assessing not just like the negatives, what could be improved about the songs, but also the song's merits as well. Effective songwriters are self-critical songwriters. So firstly, I would say, time okay time can be a really effective tool in this process in the heat of the moment with our creative juices flowing and maybe you've got that bit of an adrenaline kick we can think this song's done this is it this is the finished article i suggest we need to pause before going any further maybe just leave it a few days set it aside make sure you record a demo make sure you've noted down the lyrics but pause leave it for a few days and come back to it Listen again. Does it still seem as great? Do those lyrics still make sense? Days detached from the thought processes that put them together. Just sitting on a song for a bit can often give you a fuller and more accurate perspective of its qualities. After giving it some time, I'm going to suggest a few things that you can then look out for to improve your self-criticism. These are things that you can consider yourself before sharing the song with someone else. Though you may want to get a second opinion if you're a little unclear on, on some of these areas. I've taken these from a really great book that I recommend you get. I got it on ebook. It was really cheap um, from some guys called Joel Payne and Sam Hargreaves. It's called How to Write Worship Songs. I really recommend you buy a copy to get the full explanation of this and for the rest of the amazing content. But briefly, I'm just going to highlight these 10 areas that they suggest. So when we're being self-critical or self-evaluative, this is probably a slightly nicer way of thinking about it. First thing to look for, inconsistent meter. What we mean by that is the number of syllables per line. This is a really common issue. You want to try and be as consistent as possible. You might find it helpful to actually write out the number of symbols, syllables above each line to check. That's something I do because I don't always find it easy to match up those syllables. Secondly, unnatural emphasis. Are there words or part of words that are emphasised that it doesn't really make sense to? Is it sounding kind of a bit weird and a bit unnatural? Thirdly, ambiguous meaning and time definitely helps with this one okay does the song clearly convey what you want it to or actually is there room for doubt is there a particular phrasing or a particular word that could be misinterpreted away from what you intend fourthly it's a big one this questionable theology we need to be singing truth. And if you're not sure about that one please check back to the previous video where we talk about theology and you might also find the one helpful on Vineyard Values when it comes to that as well. Just because it sounds good doesn't mean it's necessarily true. Just because the syllables fit doesn't mean it's something we should be singing out. 
And linked to that, number five, is weak rhymes. If you're going to rhyme, let's make sure we rhyme well and not rhyme for the sake of it. Six, unsingability, something I struggle with a lot. It's great, okay, you might have written this phenomenal song, okay, it's great you can sing it, but can a congregation sing it? Will they be able to pick it up fairly quickly in the short space on a Sunday morning, and will they be able to sing it back and sing it well? Number seven, another thing to look for is shifting address. Who are we singing to? What's the perspective? Are you singing to God the Father, and then do you suddenly switch to singing to Jesus? Um, there's ways you can make switches like that, but actually consistency and clarity can be really helpful here. Number eight is musical mismatch. Do your lyrics match the mood of the music? Okay, maybe you've got this like really joyful song, like in terms of lyrical content, okay, and then the music's just a bit slow and a bit more reflective, or vice versa. We need to try and match the music to the lyric. Ninth, Thematic wandering, this is a classic one for songs, and I struggle with this. You want to get everything in, okay? You want to get the full depth and breadth of scripture, all the characteristics of God in one song. Don't, okay? What is your theme? Look at your song, okay? Can you, in a sentence, tell me, or can you write down in your self-critical role, what is the theme of that song? And then use that as a benchmark to check through the rest of the verses, the chorus, the bridge. Do you stick to the theme? And then finally, in their wonderful phrase, liturgical homelessness. Uh, essentially, what they're, they're saying there is liturgy being kind of like the process and the program of the church morning. Okay, where does your song fit in that? When is it likely to be sung? Is it kind of a declaration song? Is it a response song? Is it an encounter song? And their advice is that actually, if it doesn't have a place, in a space in the church service, it's probably not going to be that useful. Okay, so it's worth thinking about what kind of song have you crafted here? Where do you envisage it having a place in the service? Because if it doesn't have a place, then worship leaders are unlikely to be able to use it. So if you can go through the issues first, okay, you can go through that top 10 I've just shared with you. If you can look at your song yourself before sharing it, it will help us as a church, create a community of songwriters who are striving to create really well-crafted songs. And then when we do share it with others, when you send it to your worship leader, when you send it to me, when you send it to whoever you're sending it to, okay, you'll feel more equipped to consider and weigh up the feedback that they're offering. You'll feel a bit more confident and comfortable in sharing that. And the person then providing the feedback has got a more straightforward job, okay, of helping you do the little refining features that make a song from good to great. So let's do it. Let's self-evaluate. Let's get self-critical.